Happy Labor Day weekend, everyone. 2016. Enjoy the video. All right, you guys. This is our little next YouTube video. We're going to talk about a little electrical device here, duplex outlet, which is used pretty much worldwide uh, for a lot of devices, different currents in different countries. Over here in the northern U.S., it's uh, 110, 120 voltage, and they're usually about 15 amps. Uh, they're usually on a 15 amp breaker circuit. It could be in series or something like that. Okay, there's a lot of things people would squawk at. They would laugh right away and say, what are you talking about? We don't need a video on this. Uh, we install these all the time. I'm going to cover some relevant information that people might have realized when they first started. They studied, and after doing so many installations, it's all taken for granted uh, recently. So let's make this video for those who didn't have that kind of training or study when they first started and who might be taking things for granted, how simple things are and don't realize what they're actually looking at okay let's start with uh, the prongs which would be one here a small one a larger one and half rounded one the half rounded one is the ground uh, that green screw is for a ground wire if you're using three wire system per se a hot neutral and the ground grounds tend to be either bare uh, material or green color for the most part there are times you will look in a box and you will see all kinds of different colors because people might even use what they have available at the time okay these two terminals here where you actually screw into the uh, box are actually connected to the ground I'm hoping you can see right here where this screw is connected to this part here but this is grounded and so is this grounded that is one way to ground the device if you up north per se in New Jersey or New York where I'm from 40 years in New York, 9 years in Jersey and a few years down here in Virginia um, we use metal boxes up north over here they use plastic boxes and they use three wires so one is a ground wire and it's usually bare over here Okay, up north it can be bare or green yeah, but this is one way to ground this device uh, using a metal box that has armored cable that's grounded to the service panel um, whatever kind of service you're using, 30, 60, 100 amp service in your place something like that, okay? the small one here is actually the hot side you will usually see it yellow on this side here the only reason this is not yellow is because this particular device is made for aluminum wiring so that's why it's colored that way but it should be, the small size should be wired the hot side, it's usually the black wire the larger size should be wired the neutral side and that's usually white and that should be the white wire okay but at times you will see different things so having a multimeter knowing how to test would be really nice I'll probably make the next video on that on testing an outlet properly the ground is basically a safety feature if one of the wires comes loose and you still have current going through the device uh, or going in series it might hit the box and the ground will bring the current back to the service panel and that goes to the ground usually connected to some kind of plumbing uh, fixture like where the meters are, piping, stuff like that. Sometimes you see a rod outside in the back of the house and that's where it might be connected to the ground, okay? So you got your hot small side, you got your neutral, the larger side, and you got your ground uh, half moon uh, curved. In the older days uh, there was no actual ground, I'm gonna say about 40 decades ago, 40, four decades ago, about 40 years ago uh, I used to see a lot of outlets and I still see them once in a while in different houses, different older places where the prongs are the same size and there is no ground. Okay, uh, a little bit difficult to change the wiring and put an uh, added wire there for ground but it's a safety feature and it's a really good idea if you're upgrading to definitely do that. Uh, change the wiring, not just the devices if you can. Okay, finding a way to put a ground in there. Nice safety feature. Now that we understand where the wires are supposed to go and get an idea how it works the black supplies the power which is the line and the white brings it back to the service panel the ground is a safety but also uh, brings it to the ground okay a plumbing device with water or actual rod in the ground okay um one of the other things with the wiring with um 
device like this, if you're using a 15 amp circuit, you should be using 14 gauge wiring, which is a little bit smaller than 12 gauge. 12 gauge is a little bit thicker, and that is for a 20 amp uh, breaker. If you have 14 gauge wiring in the wall, whatever devices you're using, and you're tripping the breaker, and you decide, well, I'm going to put a 20 amp breaker. Uh, where the 15 amp breaker was, the wiring doesn't support it, it'll overheat and likely possibility of actually causing a fire, so it's actually very dangerous. Uh, any electrician will tell you, you can't do that. Uh, I have seen <laughs> people actually do that and I had to take the device out of the breaker out and explain to them that I cannot put my name on this work, on this job, this is done incorrectly and I'm not going to take responsibility for it. I haven't gotten in trouble for that, but uh, People just didn't understand at the time that you have to have certain type of gauge wiring. So you can see how a little device like this can actually start getting more complicated. Okay, on the hot side, on the neutral side, you, there's a little tab right here. I'm hoping you can see that. A little tab right there. Okay, and there's one on the other side. Uh, right here. Okay. Those tabs can be broken off. If you're ever changing the device and you inspect the outlet and you see one of those tabs broken off, it's usually for a reason. They might have separate line powering the top and separate line powering the bottom. For the most part, they might share the neutral. Uh, you usually don't see the neutral tab broken off, but you will tend to see once in a while the hot side tab will be broken because they'll run a light switch to this side so you can power uh, a light fixture that's plugged into it. And then this will be constant current through the breaker. Okay, so you can turn the light on and off. If they don't have a light fixture, light a box for a light fixture in the ceiling, they might use a top outlet like that. Okay, so that's something to look at. Uh, to realize if you are changing an outlet, you will be looking for that hot tab. Make sure it's not broken. And you can check it with a moisture meter. I mean with a multimeter, excuse me. <laughs> uh, no coffee, yes, excuse me. Uh, other things to consider besides the wiring uh, being placed properly, the, the, whether that tab is broken. Uh, in the back sometimes you see holes here where this doesn't have holes and this usually if it's a 15 amp um, device it'll have little holes where you can actually put the wire in instead of having to put it around, wrap it around the wire nut or you can have wires wrapped around the nut and you can actually put it in and it'll be on the same setup corresponding screw okay this one down here this one up here here and this one down here there it'll actually be corresponding so you can put more wires in the same device this is a lesser inexpensive one so it doesn't come with those holes where you can actually put a wire in there and you don't have to screw it in it gets locked in with like some kind of blade that's uh, angled properly so it gets locked in it's almost impossible to take it out let's use a little tiny screwdriver to kind of pry it out uh, move that blade so you can get the wire out you will notice that certain gauge wiring will not fit in there because it's not supported uh, for that type breaker so that's something also to note uh, one of the last things I like to point out since we're talking about an outlet when you do put the wiring around this is just for illustration purposes excuse me when you do put the wiring around uh, one of these set screws you're going to actually wrap it in the direction the set screw turns. The other thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a little pair of pliers or something and you're going to try to squish the wire where it wraps real tight and then you're going to set the set screw down. Okay, that would be for proper install installation. You're not trying to just leave it open like this if you can help it. You're trying to wrap it around tight like this, okay? The bare wire and there is a little position here to be set in where the wire sits in nice and tight if you can get that far. I have seen where some people have actually just put a wire and set it in like this. I'm not going to say that's a proper installation. You want to wrap it around a screw in the direction it closes. Okay, that would be proper installation. Okay, I think I covered enough for a duplex outlet for beginners. Get them idea what to look for, what to know. I'm kind of surprised how many 
people I have put this device in front of and asked me to tell me something or given them a multimeter and they could not test the outlet property if it was wired properly with per se a wiki multimeter or even analog they didn't know how to check for hot neutral reverse they didn't know to check for power with the ground or check for neutral to ground there was things they just didn't understand so that would be in a different video I'm not sure when I'll put that up but I would like people to see that again this one doesn't have any holes this is a similar color this is made for aluminum AOL um, the copper ones are made with yellow on the hot side which is where these two smaller prongs go you're not supposed to put a uh, regular copper device outlet switch on aluminum wiring the basic difference between aluminum and copper wiring is expansion rate when it heats up the aluminum expands faster it's more supple it's easier to break um, and these set screws are designed for aluminum uh, the way this device is made okay so there is a major difference there something to understand I think I covered everything I can think of for now off the top of my head I did not write any of this stuff down it's just 20 years of doing this it's basically hardwired in my head you guys have any questions i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye